What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Coach Black, your internet relationship and breakup coach. Today's topic, how to get your ex to chase you aggressively and still feel good about it. See, the number one thing, first and foremost, that you must understand about breakups, especially if you're the one that got dumped. If there's any chance for you to fix things with this person, getting back together needs to be their idea. The moment your ex feels like you're the one trying to push things forward, you're the one trying to make the relationship happen, it naturally repels them. The fact that they walked away from you in the first place means that they put a very low price on a relationship with you because at the end of the day, if they truly did care about you and love you in this moment, they would still be with you. So for whatever reason, maybe you did things to turn them off in the past, or they felt like the grass was possibly greener. They are taking the relationship for granted, and it's not until they get to a point where they value you in the relationship more that they will come back to you. There's nothing that you can say to your ex. And I need you to really hear me closely because a lot of people feel like you can send a perfect text message. You can send old pictures. It's gonna get your ex back to that place where they wanna be with you. The fact of the matter is the more that you do, the more you will push them away. This is the best time to do less. There's two things that you really have to focus on to draw your ex back into you. And the first thing is your investment level. Now, what does that mean? See, when you first start a relationship with someone, a friend, a business partner, a coworker, whoever it is, usually at the beginning of the relationship, there's not a high level of investment from both parties because you're still getting to know each other. You're still filling each other out. And frankly, you haven't built that strong bond and connection yet. So you're usually not going out of your way to do them favors. You're not calling them all the time. You're not constantly checking up on them. And this is perfectly natural. No one would be upset about meeting someone a day before and not hearing from them for a week or a week and a half, right? It's not such a big deal because the investment level is still low. Now, this is the same thing you need to do when it comes to a breakup. When someone dumps you or walks away from you, automatically they are saying you're no longer important in their life. And if someone tells you that you're not important to them, well, they shouldn't be important to you. So your investment in their opinions, your investment in their life, their well-being should not be very high. You shouldn't be calling or texting them. You should be giving them as much space as possible. I want to tell you a quick story. The other day I was trying to get insurance. I was trying to get life insurance and just update some things that I was doing for myself personally. And so I started searching online and um, I found this website that looked promising. So I filled out my information. I gave them my number and my email so they could reach back out to me and I could get some more life insurance. Well, anyway, so a salesperson from this company reached out to me and I missed a call. I couldn't get to it. I was busy. I was probably shooting a video or something. And he left a voicemail and sent a text message. Well, <laughs> however things happened, I was still busy that week. I was so busy with the work I was doing and he kept texting me like every single day. Did you get my message? Did you get my message? Hey, do you have five minutes to talk? And it got to a point where he had messaged me like 10 times in the span of two days. Now his investment level in me and in the business that I could potentially give to him was so high that it became annoying. Now, as a salesperson, you kind of understand his incentive is to make a sale, is to close a deal. So even though he's trying to help me with life insurance, 
it feels completely one-sided because if this was about me, he would just wait for me to get back to him. But because he only sees himself and what he's trying to get out of the deal, he's not even considering the fact that maybe I have something going on. Maybe I was busy and I would get back to him. So when you're blowing someone up to talk to them, to text them, to spend some time with them, the truth is it's coming from a selfish place. And your ex feels the same way when they're asking you for distance and you keep reaching out to them. You keep calling, you keep texting. You're so invested in them and their opinions that it's completely unnatural and it turns them off. Your level of investment in your ex should be zero. The only time that you would talk to them is if they reach out to you. And if they don't reach out to you, you have to be okay with not talking to them for the moment. I'm telling you, when you do this and your ex notices that you're no longer invested in them, a lot of times it draws and attracts them back to you. And now they feel like talking to you, getting together is their idea. And this is when they start to chase you. It feels good. It feels natural because they're now pursuing your attention. You must give them space. So important. Now, the second thing that you must focus on if you want your ex to continue to chase and pursue you, especially if they have started to reach out, is that you must give your ex freedom. This is so important when it comes to human beings and human nature. And just because all of a sudden you started to hear from your ex does not give you an excuse to start to pursue them. After a breakup, even though your ex is starting to come to you, they must still be the ones driving things forward. And even as bad as you might want them, and even as much as you might want to fix things with them, it's important that you give your ex freedom. They must feel like they can come and go as they please until you get to a place where there is a commitment. Now, I'm not saying that you put your life on hold and that you're always available. And as soon as they show up, you drop everything for them. That is not what I'm saying. You still have to have your life. You have to do things with your friends and family and do things that make you happy. But if your ex comes to you, let's say, for example, you have a date and the date goes amazing. Like there's a lot of intimacy. There's a lot of closeness. Your ex needs to feel like just because you had an amazing date does not mean that you're back in a relationship together. They need to feel like they can have an amazing date with you, go back home and still be free. The commitment will come later. Do not focus on the labels, on the titles and trying to force things with them. Always focus on the experience that they have with you. If your ex is constantly having good interactions with you, good experiences with you, eventually they will be the ones asking you for commitment. And that's exactly where you want them to be. You want them to be the ones pursuing you. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful for you. If you did enjoy it and you like the content, go ahead and like this video right now. It does mean a lot. And it helps the channel out plus it costs you nothing if you know anyone else that would benefit or appreciate this video be sure to share it with them it truly does help grow the channel when people like you share it with others that need it if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to the channel and if you want to talk to me one-on-one -on -one, the quickest way to do so is to click the first link in description and i'll be happy to help you with your breakup situation truly is a blessing and I love to do it. Anyway, if you have thoughts, comments, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. I appreciate you and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.